I actually found an awesome car on eBay. What's happening, Panda Nation? Peter Von Panda here. There are a lot of cars on eBay that I really want, but I found a car that actually just struck me and I was like, oh my gosh, I really want it. And there are a couple reasons for it. So you may know the name Chip Foose. He was one of the youngest inductees into the Hot Rod Hall of Fame. Awesome car designer, you know, Hot Rodder, uh, just makes amazing custom cars. I said, I have a couple of TV shows. He was on rides, he was on overhauling. Uh, he's been on just a bunch of stuff. You know, he is an icon in the car world. If you're in the car world, you, you already know the name. But one of the things that happened, and I want to say this was in the 2000s, there was a show called Rides, and it was uh, narrated by Jason Priestley. And there was an episode about the power tour with Christopher Titus driving his custom Chevy Bel Air, customized by Chip Foose, built by Chip Foose. I won't just say customized. It was really built up by Chip Foose. A custom car by Chip Foose are one of these things that are rarely traded rarely trade hands because they are rare people usually pour a bunch of money into a car to have it customized or built by chip foos he has won a number of riddler awards and so having something even drawings or autographs by him you know uh people don't part with and so i was shocked to find that that car the christopher titus car is available on ebay um, i'm not surprised that cars trade hands but what i was shocked at is this car is pretty famous uh it's celebrity owned and um this car i actually thought was called once a night I thought that's what Christopher Titus or, and Chip Foose named it, but I'm actually fairly intimately familiar with this because they did a whole hour long episode on it and on the power tour. You know, I won't remember everything about it, but I saw this and it just struck me. And then I realized it says Chip Foose here. And this is a uh, 56 Chevy Bel Air. And I want to kind of go down here because these pictures are awesome. This car looks super cool. Uh, first of all, the, the front bumper here has been flipped upside down to give it a kind of a more lowered look you know these headlights uh i think the the headlight rings here the french headlights i think are from a ford this grill here i think was made by sam foos um the, some of the some of the other pieces came off like a camaro i think the uh tail end of this if i can go here the deck here all of these slats here are brass i think brass or bronze or something and then chrome plated and then the deck lid has been angled in kind of pushed in a little bit here and uh you can just see how slammed it is and the convertible top that uh i actually don't think there's a convertible top i think it i think it lifts off i i, I can't remember uh entirely and i want to say i wonder if they have a windshield shot here oh so look at this so you might say hey the bel air doesn't have a speed bird well his is underneath the hood here it's actually been manufactured into the engine cover there which is pretty cool you can see here the foos logo i you know it's just a really striking car it looks good it's not one of these that's overdone and overly blingy obviously it's it's a very clean inside some pinstriping gauges i mean just nicely done in the typical chip foos fashion i actually thought the history on this car was that Christopher Titus bought this car when he was a younger man and then brought it to Chip Foose at one point to have it built. And so it's one of these things. Let me go back here. What you can see here, and I remember one of the things that happened in the the uh, the show was that they hit some rain and he didn't have wipers. So I don't see wipers on there, but I think he actually installed, uh, yeah, the wiper pivots right here. I think those are four wiper blades, but the wiper blades come off and that's because uh chip foost actually didn't want to put any functionality for wiper blades because it kind of ruins the look of the car so i think in general it he uh titus forced him to do it but the wiper blades aren't on there normally uh you can see a big trunk here so um you know, here if i go back to the trunk this was laid in a little bit here obviously the whole car is slammed kind of to the ground i think it might actually even be on air suspension i think these are custom mill chip foost wheels um, you know, even if under the undercarriage, all the stuff that you normally would not see is just, you know, done to the nines, you know, just super clean. The, this car wasn't meant to be a Riddler award winner or anything. I mean, when you do something like that, it just becomes crazy expensive. But you can see here, man, I mean, all of the framing is done amazingly well. Um, so this is a car that I think, as I was saying, Christopher Titus bought as a young man, customized by Chip Foose. And so it's one of those where I'm surprised to see it ever go on sale because I feel like this kind of car would carry a ton of nostalgia and memories. And it'd be one of those things, you know, on top of that, when you buy a Foose car, 
you just probably wouldn't want to depart with it anyway. You can even see the little Chevy emblems. I actually think he made, Foose made these um, tail lights by melting plastic on a mold in the oven at his home, I think, and then put on these like, um, I can't remember if they were originally on steering wheels or seat backs or something like that. So just a lot of detail. And, you know, because it's a classic, good looking American hot rod, man, I would just have this in my collection forever. Now, people sell cars for all sorts of reasons. And I'm not sure what Christopher Titus's situation is. Um, he used to have a TV show and things like that. I see people clear out stuff all the time. But I just feel like this is a car that I would have really held on to. Surprised to see it trading hands. And I'll be honest, $225,000 puts me out of the running for being a candidate for buying this car. I actually don't think that is a unreasonable amount of money. I would say that this level of customization, to me, if uh, this were done by someone else, maybe someone of lesser name, but obviously of, of a, a skilled uh craftsman um customizer uh you know and with with the age and stuff on it um you know it looks like it's got a little bit of work that needs to be done and detailing and, and things like that but you know it's probably a hundred thousand dollar car i mean i i I'd probably say this the price here reflects a hundred thousand dollar premium for it being a cheap chip cheap not cheap chip foos car but if you wanted a foos car there are probably not a lot of ways to get one that is cheaper than this. I mean, even when Chip Foose had kind of a special edition Mustang, which was mostly a body kit and then maybe a turbo or something like that. And then he did a couple, you know, kind of a production run of Cadillacs through a Cadillac dealership. I don't remember how many of those were available, 50, 100, I don't, you know, something like that. Again, those were modified. I would not call them builds by any means. And they were nice. I mean, I kind of want one. I've always kind of looked for one of those Chip Foos XLRs because I thought he actually improved on the XLR. But again, a lot of those were rocker moldings and, uh, roof appliques and stuff like that and you're looking at hundred thousand dollar plus for those cars and so to have something that's heavily customized like this I'm, I'm actually I'm actually kind of surprised at so um, you know for a quarter million bucks you can get into the Foos family and uh, you know have the history there and the Christopher Titus car anyway I was surprised to see it wanted to throw that out there because I saw the picture and I was like hey, that looks like a car that I know, and I kind of scratch my head there for a minute. So, pretty amazing. If someone wants to buy it and let me review it, I would love to do that. Or if someone wants to buy it and donate it to the Panda Research Institute for video content, um, I'd be fine with that too. Very appreciative, in fact. That's it for today. Peter Brown Panda. Out.